hey guys thank you for coming back to the video um for the first few minutes of this video the audio was kind of messed up i was still trying to fix um still working on my audio for the uh for the for the mic and versus the uh, the gameplay so you're not really going to hear anything all i was just explaining is how to get to photo mode is pretty much up on the d-pad i don't know why somebody was trying to say that they couldn't find it uh, so most likely there's a bunch of trolls out there but if you want to just fast forward you can do so all you gotta do is just go ahead to like the the three minute mark and that's usually that's where i start to get to like the, the nitty-gritty of like how to use so um yeah just sit back relax and um make sure you take notes appreciate it That's it. If you want to put it on another button, you can do so. Alright, so now I gotta get that out the way. Let's go ahead and click the board mode. Uh, the car I'm using is, uh, I guess, uh, a Drift Spec RX-8. I'm not exactly sure, I'm not exactly sure who drifts it. It just looks pretty dope. So, first things first, um, what I want to show you is focus so once you get into photo mode there's going to be uh, um, some directions at the bottom so it says take photo uh, exit focus um, effects mode and then like promo quick shots and reset cosmetics um, the main one that you're going to be want to focus on is pretty much the take photo well the focus one it's going to be a uh, uh, I'm going to let you know why the focus is going to be kind of important because this is how some people mess up. Another person asked me another question about how do I save my settings and that's how I'm going to get into that um, with the, the focus. So from this area here, from this layout, um, X is going to be to focus and then if you press Y, it's going to take you to the effects mode. Uh, from here, this is pretty much where all your um, settings is going to be. And once you change something, it's automatically going to switch to custom up here. So once you switch like just one thing, it's just going to go straight to custom. This is going to be your custom setting. Okay. So from here, uh, first things first is shutter speed. Shutter speed is pretty simple. Uh, shutter speed is the amount of uh, motion that's going to be within a picture. So if your car is moving, and you go take a photo um, the higher the shutter speed is the more movement that's going to show within the picture so let me, let me show y'all that right now just so that way y'all can get a good a good view of how it looks <laughs> see it kind of like because I'm not focused on the car so once you're in this setting here just press X to focus and then press Y to go to the settings and then it shows all this motion for you here uh, the lower you go it'll pretty much look like it's stationary like it's sitting there the higher the more motion will be affected and from there we got uh, the focus mode so this one here this this is what I really want to like uh, like drive like it's like sear in your mind uh, there's two different settings there's panning and then there's tracking so with tracking I'm gonna start with tracking tracking is pretty much uh, tracking the car at the same speed so uh, imagine um, this RX-H driving down a highway and then there's somebody else 
driving in another car beside it and he ends up taking the picture going the same speed as the rx8 that is called tracking because you're tracking the car within the same speed limit so that why that's why everything in the background doesn't look so blurry only yeah everything is not going to look so blurry because you're tracking the car so it's going to look a little bit more cleaner but panning panning is different <clears throat> What panning does is um, if there's somebody on the side of the street and he just has, he just happened to has his camera out and he sees this, or I'm pretty sure he hears this car coming down the street. Uh, this right here is pretty much what is called panning because the person who's taking the picture is stationary while the, the car is in motion. So everything is going to be pretty much a little a lot more blurry because you're trying to follow that's pretty much what panic is you're trying to follow the car while you're stationary uh, so this is uh panning and you see like how the background is like just completely blurred out and it's pretty much uh focused on which part of the car you're just you focused on all right <clears throat> and then when I go to tracking, you can see the background is a little bit more cleaner because that's just, just it's following the same amount of uh, mile an hour. All right, uh, focus. Uh, in my last video on Horizon 4, I didn't really go into detail of like what you can use focus for, but I I will do it now. So focus on here is pretty much uh, if you want to like stack photos like so if you really want a sharp picture then you can kind of like this is like uh, this trick is called stacking so you can pretty much just take a picture uh, take a picture of the car and then take a picture of the the background actually like this so if I focus on the car boom I could take a picture and then from here I can just the shutter down and do this uh, aperture there we go so boom focused on the car so what I want if you want to do this little trick this is what you call stacking well this is what I call stacking um, it's like three three four five separate photos so you just pretty much get your composition that you want and then from there you just uh, bring this number up or down just so that way you can figure out where you want to focus without even moving your camera so if I was to do that you see like the car is starting to come into focus more and then if I keep on going up then the car will get out of focus but then the background will start to come into focus that's kind of like what you call stacking so you can take individual pictures and yeah, you see like how the trees in the background are starting to become in focus now. That's what you call stacking. You take a picture of the car in focus, take a picture of the foreground in focus, take a picture of the background in focus. And then if you're really like, um, if, you're, if you're a pro in like editing, you can put these two pictures together to get one sharp image. Or you can do kind of like uh, uh, this here. So like if you have, want to take a picture of the, the wheel right if you want to take a picture of the front wheel and then you want it to just kind of just keep this composition and then just take it more towards the back you can kind of do that way as well take a picture of the front and back without changing your composition i hope i got that out correctly so <clears throat> let me see if i uh all right so you see the back of the wheel is actually starting to come into focus so if you want to keep this composition you can take a picture of the back wheel and then bring this number down to start putting focus on the front that way you have two separate pictures within the same composition done uh i said it's going to be a quick video but it's not really i just kind of lied to myself all right next up is going to be exposure Exposure is pretty much going to be the, um, if you want your picture to be brighter or darker, it's kind of like a subtle, 
uh, change of lighting. So the higher, the brighter it will get, like so. And then the lower, the darker it will get. So like if you want it to look like it's at nighttime or something like that, that's pretty much what this is for. Or if you wanted to make it look really bright out. But I usually keep this number down to a minimum. I will say right around like 50, maybe even like 40. Just so that way I can keep that nice balanced uh, exposure for myself. Um, aperture. Um, it's going to be the amount of blur or bokeh. So you can see here, I put it at 50 or 51. And you can see how much out of how much is out of focus on the back but if I was bringing this number down more would start to be in focus like so and then pretty much if I bring it down to zero everything will be in focus so usually with this um, on four I don't know if they fixed it but on four it was like this little thing where if you put it too high it would do like a, a cut up, like a choppy cut in the blurred, blurred areas. But on here, it looks, it looks actually pretty smooth. So I'm not sure if they fixed it or not. I will have to go in the detail, but I'm not going to do it in this video. Uh, here, bokeh shape. Uh, so if, if you're at night nighttime or actually you can kind of see it here. So if you look at the back wheel here and you see like how this little lighting here it looks round circular so that's pretty much what that's going to affect like pretty much hot spots so you can definitely see this at night so if this is circular if I was to change it now it's going to be diamond shaped you can kind of see like a diamond shaped um, in the hot spot um, pentagon and then I'm pretty sure they also got hexagon but that's what that's going to affect I usually just keep it on circular I actually might use diamond just to kind of get that sparkly effect on some pictures, but usually I'm just leaving it as circular. Um, just you know because it's a little bit more natural for me. So uh, sampling, this is just pretty much how the the picture when you take it is going to be processed. Uh, a fast one is going to be low quality, uh, and it's going to just it's going to process faster after taking a shot. Quality is going to be high quality. It's going to take a little bit longer to process all the details and everything. So that way you have a nice crisp image. I just keep it on quality. So that way I, all my pictures are nice and detailed in the end. Contrast is going to affect the, the shadows and bright areas in the picture. So I'm pretty sure I can get it on this side. So. As you can see here, the car on this side is um, is shaded by the light. So if I was to bring this number up, if I was to bring that number up, the shadows and bright spots will be increased like dramatically. So that's what that's going to affect. I usually use the contrast as like a fine tune for for like a composition and exposure just to get like where, where I want it. And I'll show you that later on, like what I mean by fine tuning, because it, it affects the picture less, uh, less than brightness at the bottom below that. So I'm just bring this back down to 50. All right. So again, like color, self-explanatory, you bring it all the way down. I'm pretty sure you'll figure this out. It turns to black and white. Oh my gosh. And funny thing is, is that I, I love black and white pictures. It kind of brings a little bit more like drama into the picture because for me sometimes I think color can kind of be distracting but if you know if you really know how to use color it can really be like impactful just as good as black and white All right, so. oh another thing about contrast I noticed that they fixed it because on um, on four if you bring the contrast all the way up, I think. Oh no, actually, if you bring it all the way down. Oh, actually, yeah. Oh, never mind. It does the same thing. It'll milk out. So you get like this milky effect. So 
so usually you want to use contrast like you want to use more contrast other than that it's just gonna look uh it's gonna have that like that moody like less saturated type of a feel if that's what you're going for then you can you can definitely bring this down all right so color we already went brightness that's going to be the overall um brightness and darkness of the image like the overall image of like how bright and dark so if the higher is number the brighter is going to get and then it's just going to turn to white and then the darker it's just going to turn straight to black so you want to keep this in a happy medium area and this is where it gets into detail because this affects the highlights and shadows way more than contrast it's like it has bigger steps so usually what I'll do is I'll set the brightness where I want it and then I'll fine tune how I want how I want the shadows with contrast because the contrast will just like fine tune the shadows and brights highlights a little bit better so if you're going to edit anything um, if you're going to if you're going to make a setting I would do the brightness first and then go to contrast. Now, sepia is pretty much just going to put like an orange hue over the over the image to make it look a, a little bit more vintage. I don't really use it that much. Um, I don't like it. I don't really you don't really need it. I don't think because you got temperature. Temperature does the same thing. See, so but it just it it affects the picture better as you see like I just brought the temperature up to 99 and made it warmer but if you do that with the sepia it just kind of looks see <coughs> Let me bring this back down vignetting um, I don't use too much vignette but it's just gonna put like a uh, like a border around the image like so so this is going to be pretty much a black border it depends on how much you want and also if you want to change how the vignette looks if you look at the bottom and it says vignette style all you got to do is press the rb button and it'll change how the vignette will show on the image i kind of like this one it kind of gives like that um hd uh movie like movie borders effect it's pretty dope mm, but I'm gonna just leave it circular so that way it kind of just affects the edges just a tad bit. Actually, I might just use the HD a little bit more. I'll just bring this bump, bring this number down. Yeah, but who knows? It just depends on personal personal preference. Temperature, like I said, the higher the number, the warmer, and then the lower the number, the cooler. So it's gonna be more blues. All right, so. Um, and then everything else below here is self-explanatory. So car lights enabled, you see the lights are on. And then if I disable, the lights are off. All right, driver, driver's in there. Uh, one thing that is good is that um, if a car is in motion, then you can't really take the driver out of the picture unless the car is stationary. So remember that. And then crowd is pretty much like if you see people in the area, uh, you can take them out if you want. Uh, same goes for like animals, um, deers, chicken. If you don't want them in the picture, then you can just take them out. All right. So, if you want to save these settings, all you got to do is just set the settings that you want. And please be careful not to get this mixed up because if you look at the bottom, it says to reset to default. Now, if you go back. You press if you go back oh crap so all you gotta do if you want to go back to like this area here where like has the focus circle all you gotta do is press y again and it'll take it back to photo mode so when you go back to photo mode it also has x as the focus so this is what i was talking about so you got to be careful so once you put your settings in they're automatically saved all you got to do is just be careful and do not press X while you're in effects mode. Oh, you always got to back out to photo mode and then refocus. And then you got to go back into settings just like that. After that, as you can see, all the settings are still saved. 
and then nothing will change as long as you don't make that mistake by pressing the reset the default once you do that you got to set all your settings back how you how you liked it if you don't remember then that's the sucky part about it pause but uh other than that um there's other ones on here it's a uh, reset cosmetic damage so if you don't want no damage to show on your car then you can just reset that your car look clean but i'm pretty sure if you go back if you back out of photo mode the damage will still be there and then if you press the, the select button then all the uh the settings will be hidden yeah so as like for the settings I use, it's pretty much kind of the, the same as four. I use like 32 or 64 for the uh, the shutter speed. So 32 here, 32 is a little bit like a little bit more natural feeling for me because it will pick up it for me. It picks up like the motion of the car of how fast it's going at that at that moment. So this is like 50 miles an hour. So this kind of picks up like the 50 miles an hour of like the way that I want it to. Um, depending on where I'm f shooting depends on how I'm using the focus mode so I try to keep it as realistic as possible so like if I'm if I'm on the side of the street I'd uh, like off the road here or something like that unless I have like a a, a, a dune bug or an off-road vehicle then I am not uh, tracking this car at all like I'm going to be panning because I'm pretty much like off the road. I might as well just be standing here taking a picture like so. Boom. See how that looks? It looks a little bit better. But if I was tracking, I would be tracking at least like on the road, same speed as the car like this. So focus on the car. I track the car. And now you're in tracking mode. Boom. This is something that because now I got this composition um, in front of the car. So the car has to follow my speed. Like say, you know, like if if I'm in like a van, pretty much if the uh, if I tell the car to move up some or something like that or back off, then that's pretty much the car following my direction and following my speed and the speed of the van or whatever vehicle you're in. So that's what tracking is for. Also, you got to make sure it's like try to keep it realistic so this is like a one a one lane road so as long as like it doesn't really matter like on a video game so you can be on this side of the road and act like there's no cars on here and you can still do it tracking that's fine you know what i mean but just make sure that you keep it within that realistic plane of tracking and panning so like tracking is on the road driving at the same speed panning is pretty much on foot uh focus um that's only i don't really worry about it because i don't use a lot of like the, the focus like stacking and everything like that um usually what i do is just i just go to focus and i just take a picture so i don't really use this as much so i'm gonna just put this to zero boom and then focus back on the car that's it exposure i usually leave exposure down i don't know what that is but who cares uh exposure i'll leave this around 50 to 40 depending on like how dark i want it but other than that i would say the highest i would go is like 55 and then the lowest i'll go is 40 maybe 37 something like that so i'm gonna just bring this up because i kind of like the the brightness uh, aperture the same as the last one i'll say right around like 21 maybe 30 and it also that also depends on like how far close you are from the car so if like really close you would want less uh less aperture so that way more is in focus but not too much all right so yeah, let's see like that. So this wheel is like in focus, but it's like a nice subtle uh, drop off with the uh, with with the picture and the back. So 
usually the closer you are the lower you want to keep this number just to keep it nice and subtle the further you want the further you are from the picture uh, you want to raise that up if you don't want the background to show that much I would just say just do it uh, just until the background starts to just get out of focus just at that point kind of like that so like around 40 to 50 um, this is personal preference as well this one here I prefer that you use quality to get the best quality out of the picture contrast I usually use this around 50 to 55 and then brightness I'll bring down maybe to like 42 to 47 um, sepia I don't use at all uh, vignette I would say 30 is like the highest I'll go even though you can barely see it but yeah and then for temperature I always bring it down one just to bring just a tad bit of coolness in it because I don't like my pictures to be too warm so like you can see from just from 50 to 51 it'll bring in like a lot of red so <clears throat> and that's pretty much it uh, this was pretty much almost a half hour which kind of sucked but um, I wanted to make sure that I explained everything in detail um, as quick as I could as clear as could I could so I hope y'all um, I hope y'all get some good pictures on here and uh, see you in the next video